Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite and one of the very first pieces I learned on classical guitar. This is a beautiful piece. It's Francisco Torrega's Study in E Minor. This is just an amazing piece to be able to play. Um, and once you learn it, you'll have it forever. It's, it's, a, it's a real gift. So this is going to be broken into four parts. And of course you can write those parts into the practice journal, which you can claim up here in the corner. I suggest everyone download that journal and keep track of their goals. Um, I want to break this apart into a right and left hand type of thing, but it's going to be less emphasized on the right hand this time around because the picking pattern remains constant through the entire piece. So this video covers how to play the piece. The next video in the playlist, if you want to check out the playlist, it's up here as well as in the description is going to run through the music theory as well as the interpretive ideas of this piece. So without further ado, let's get to the first line. I've got some really cool fingerings that you're not going to find in other videos. Um, members of musicandguitarlessons.com can download the PDF, but of course you can see the sheet music here on the screen. So first let's talk about the right hand. This is going to be very, very consistent throughout the entire piece. You're going to be using your thumb to play the bass notes. And the bass notes go between the E, A, and D strings. And then your three fingers here, your ring, middle, and index, are going to be plucking your high E for the ring, the B for the middle, and the index for the G. So you're going to be doing thumb and ring at the same time, middle, and index. The next thing to be aware of is that we're in 3-4 time here and it's divided up into triplets. So each beat we're going to have a 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3. So it's going to have a nice triplet feel. Right? And that that's going to go through the entire piece. So it's got to be da 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 da. There'll be three beats per measure, and each thumb note lasts a dotted half note, which is three beats. So I'm not going to be hitting the thumb again until the one, the count one of every measure. So this first line, um, first we start off by doing one triplet with our low E and high E, B and G's, just all open. And then the next two beats of that measure, you're going to use your pinky to get the G on your high E there on the third fret. And then we're going to be hitting the open A string with your thumb. And then you're, all, you're going to be placing these fingers here. I've got a couple different fingerings I'm going to show you here in a moment. And these fingerings are actually going to make the bar coming up a little easier, so, so stay tuned. But what I want you to be able to practice first is just Get used to that. It also helps when you play this open A to quickly damp the low E with your thumb so that they don't ring together. So we get. Okay. So I'm going to show you two different ways to finger the next chord. This is not something that you're really going to see in a lot of other lessons. Um, I prefer the one that seems a little more difficult, but I'll explain why it's, a, I think, the easiest fingering for this section. So we'll go with first the, the fingering that requires less stretching, but it, it's just not going to be as easy to get to the bar chord. So what we get is that C of the B string. So you can get that with your index. And then the A of the G string you're going to get with your third finger, not your second. Now the reason you want to do it with your third finger is you're going to make it very easy to slide your pinky into that F sharp, which is the second fret of your high E. So we're doing that triplet pattern. One, two, three, one. And then you're going to be placing these and sliding that in. And you're of course going to be playing the two beats that are required for the F sharp. So we get one. Next comes our um, bar chord, and you're going to be using your pinky to slide out to that fifth fret and set up the bar. So the first two notes that you hit are the second fret of the A 
and the fifth fret of the high E, and you just have a bar, but only don't worry about setting down your third finger on the D sharp yet. Just get it to there. Right? So the pinky is gonna act as a guide up here. Now let me show you one alternate finger fingering that you can use that I think makes getting to the bar even easier. So when we go to the beginning, we're gonna be playing it just the same, but when we go here, I'm gonna get my second finger for the first fret of the B and my third finger for the second fret of the G, because now my index can be back here ready, and when I slide back, all I gotta do is slide up, and my index is already ready for the bar. So we're doing a bar on the second fret. I think it's easier to do six strings and five. Some scores say do five, but I bar all six just to make it easier on myself. And then once you hit these two outside notes, you're going to be getting the third fret of, or sorry, the fourth fret of the B with your third finger, and then the second fret of the G with that bar. So what we get overall. doing so with that same picking pattern it's just ring middle index we're gonna be going second finger here on the high E third fret for your G then you're gonna lift up that second finger and get the bar and then what you're gonna do is keep your pinky hovering over this because you're gonna have to slide quickly up to the seventh fret for that B and you're gonna get three beats of that so here we go listen at it and then we're going to go on to the next line. Once you have that sounding smooth, let's move on to the next line. Okay, so the second line is a lot like the first, except the last measure is just slightly different. So instead of going up here to the seventh fret, going to be getting is your your open high and low E's and then G B and E open all at the same time and the, and the rhythm's a little slower so what we get is one one and a two and a three and a, okay so let's take a listen to this So that ending part is just slightly different. So let's take a listen to the entire first half where we get both phrases. Let's take a listen to the second half, which I think may contain some of my most favorite moments of guitar music. Okay, the second half is just beautiful. I've got a couple really cool finger tricks I'm going to show you to make the melody a bit smoother. Um, we're also going to be using the same picking pattern, you know, that's all the same through this entire piece. So it's ring, middle, and index on our high E, B, and G thumb playing on the first beat of every measure, whichever bass note it is, and I'll point those out as we go. So we have first the two open E's with those middle notes with the picking pattern, and then third fret of the high E for that G, and you're sliding up to the seventh fret of the high E for the B. So, And then your open A with that seventh fret of the high E, laying down a half bar on the fifth fret, so you get going to lift the third finger up for the fifth fret, go through the picking pattern again, and place your pinky on the eighth fret, keeping that bar down and going through the picking pattern. So overall, so what I like to do for the next chord change is I like to place my third finger on the string before I shift, 
and look down to the second fret, I'm gonna get my open D and the second fret of the high E with my third finger. And then I'm gonna place my index on the first fret of the B and the second finger on the second fret of the G and my pinky on the third fret of the high E for that G. Same picking pattern. I'm gonna slide my pinky up to that fifth fret, then index on the third, and then third finger on the fifth fret of the G. Um, and then we're gonna get the low third fret of low E, and keep your pinky on that fifth fret of the high E, and you're gonna get your second finger for that third fret of the high E, and your pinky's gonna stretch up to the seventh fret of that um, high E. So what we get overall, Another listen to that. All right, let's take a look at the next line. Okay, so the last line is identical to the second, except at the end, instead of the open G, B, and E, you're going to hit the 12th fret harmonics. A 12th fret harmonic is pretty easy to produce. You're going to get these on the G, B, and E. You're only going to touch the string. Don't push it to the fretboard or the fret at all. Just touch it until you feel the skin of your finger touch the string, and then don't put any more pressure on there. I mean, very light. Right over the 12th fret, and you're just going to pluck them and take away your finger and have this nice bell sound ringing out. So let's take a listen to the entire second half. Alright guys, I hope you have a lot of fun learning this one. Of course, members of musicandguitarlessons.com, download the PDF. It's 10 bucks a month to support me. There's going to be lots of lessons coming out on this channel, so I hope you hop on board. You can also check out the playlist for this up in the corner, up in the cards as well as in the description below where I have a performance of this. There will also be a music theory and interpretive rundown, which you're definitely not going to want to miss because it's going to give you a lot of information on how to play this and not just play it, but play it beautifully. So check out that playlist, and definitely do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Check out the next video. Happy practice, guys. Definitely do not forget to subscribe and like this video.